Prepare STL presents What Matters to Me Most with Dr. LJ Punch, trauma surgeon and founder of the TSTL. Learn more at preparestl.com. Hey, I'm Dr. LJ Punch, trauma surgeon and founder of The T, a community of health working to reduce the impact of trauma in the St. Louis region. This is what matters to me most. Today, I'm pondering beginnings and endings and the ways in which COVID has seemed to bring an end to a lot of the things we care about as a community but that there are many folks among us who are finding powerful ways forward, newness even in the midst of all of this challenge. I'm hanging out with my friends Terry and Erica from The Collective STL, founders of an organization that is creating community around yoga, around wellness, and around literally the way that we breathe. I'm so excited to talk to them today. I can't wait for us to get started. What matters to me most? Welcome, Erica and Terry Harris, co-founders of The Collective STL. I am excited to have you here today on What Matters to Me. I'm going to say what matters to us most because we got, we got three of us today. It's going to be a good conversation. Listen, let's start just by telling a little bit about y'all, what, what you're about, the work you do. I, I, I'm fascinated you represent a lot of what's going on in hearts and minds in the community right now as professionals, as people. Tell us a little bit about who you are. You want to start? Go ahead. All right. So I am a St. Louis native, born here, raised here. Um, my career is I'm an educator, so I teach middle school English. Um, I'm also a librarian because I love books. Um, and in terms of the collective, you know, we started the organization just to bring yoga to black people at an accessible in an accessible way um, and it kind of evolved into more well-being and self-care um, advocacy almost and so we've created this community we have a space where it's for us in that space we create community and then we do the, all of that through yoga so we have it's intergenerational you'll get elders you'll get babies with their parents um, we offer produce from farms, local farms, so that people can eat healthily. Also, like yoga is one thing, but also what you're consuming is important. Um, and so that's pretty much like a dream job. So while teaching is also a dream job, being in the community and working with the people that we meet at the collective is just amazing. It fills me up every time. Mm. So. Yeah, and I would just add, like, all four of us are educators. That's really interesting, yeah. right? So it's, it's Erica, myself, Alonzo, and Andrea. Um, we're all educators, all public school educators. And so we understand what that means to, like, serve people. But I also think, I mean, everything Erica said, but also, you know, St. Louis is really interesting. And so it's a, the collective started because of love for St. Louis and a love for Black people in St. Louis, like those two things together. Um, and then really focus in our work on the north side of St. Louis because the north side doesn't get the love that it deserves and the people don't receive the love that, that, that they need. And so we are very intentional about our financial model. We're very intentional about our location and we're very intentional about what we consider to be wellness and healing. Um, and, and, and that is built and steeped in this concept of community. Right. So at the end of our yoga practice, we do this thing that's called the collective breath. And then we all end by saying Ubuntu, which is a South African philosophy that means I am because you are, you are because I am. So the collective is built in community, it's built in this love for St. Louis, it's built uh, uh, on the love for, for black people. Wow. So you all are partners in life and professionally. Uh, you're both educators and you run and founded, you know, this this idea that yoga could be the center of a practice. And it's as a trauma surgeon and somebody who has found myself in a lot of places that don't have much to do with trauma surgery, but started with a deep understanding of the way that trauma is a personal and communal experience. It's neat to hear you talking about very similar things, what we eat how we connect to each other and what it's all about and, and, and centering the experience as black people uh, 
unabashedly, unapologetically, including being where folks are. This is really, I really appreciate, I really appreciate that. And so what I want to start by asking is, what's the word on the street? I mean, we're in the second year of this pandemic. It's, it's the summer. Um, what are you hearing people are thinking about, concerned about the most right now? Yeah, I would say I think that what people are concerned about the most is this rush to go back to normal, mm. right? And so for black people, you know, what's normal? So that's a question that, you know, people have been asking a lot. Like, wh what do you mean normal? Like, there was never this normal. Like, I've always been fighting it, right? And so um, I'm just happy to, to hear people not want to rush to go back to quote unquote normal. So people are not necessarily taking that job that they, they were forced to work in. Uh, people are not going into the office anymore. People are um, spending more time with family members, being in the outdoors. So there's not a rush to normal. And the other thing that's really beautiful, we just saw this with our event called Just Breathe um, at the History Museum. And we had 120 something people all around the front lawn of the History Museum, all spread out. What people are really wanting is to be in community and to be able to access their breath joyfully. Like that is the word on the street. That is, that is what I'm seeing with, with our people and the work that we're doing. And people are, and I love the word that you use, people are unapologetically centering their own blackness. You know, at some point it was like, we couldn't say black. You know, you can't say, you can't, you can't talk about color. You can't talk about the travesty, the trauma that is happening in our community. Now people are centering those things, they're talking about it, and they're figuring out a way, how can I connect with LJ? How can I connect with this organization? How can I connect with this organization so that we can pull our resources together to be able to ensure and allow everyone to be able to access their breath and breathe? People want to breathe. That's the word on the street. Wow. What do you well, think? I agree with you. I think one thing that struck me that you said was that people are more comfortable being unapologetically black. Um, and I think that it's become more of a celebration. People are opening themselves up to celebrating their blackness. Um, we know we live trauma every day, but I think people are looking for that joy that you mentioned and want to be celebratory. And I think that has that to your point at Just Breathe was very evident. You know, we met um, a group of dancers at an event we were doing, and they spoke to Terry about how they hadn't been able to dance. They're African dancers, they're kids, they're adults. And so Terry invited them to Just Breathe, and it was the happiest thing. Like, everyone watching enjoyed it, they were enjoying it, but it was it was the celebration of it that had they had been missing that for the past year and a half. We'll be right back. Learn about the pros and the cons of the COVID-19 vaccines. Visit preparestl.com to get the facts. Remember, the choice is yours. Prepare STL, helping St. Louisans of color prepare and prevail. This is What Matters to Me Most with Dr. LJ Punch, trauma surgeon and founder of the TSTL. So I want to pick up on this idea that a lot of the discourse around the pandemic is as if it is all loss. But what did we really lose that we needed to lose, you know, and that needs to stay gone? Because there is, there has been a lot of really powerful opportunities to do things, to interact, to, to express ourselves, and even connect novelly that we didn't have access to before. I have to say, that is one of the reasons I'm hearing people are also not so pressed to worry about the pandemic because they have gotten through this last year and a half, they have their hearts and minds, they're healthy, and they're not pressed as well to be in an ongoing state of fear about, oh, COVID, 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 COVID. That's creating some tension though for folks when it comes to what they're gonna do about their health. What are you doing to help people stay healthy right now in your home, as you got family and in your work? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it's this, it's this reimagining. Mm. It's reimagining what we think and consider health. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from gyms or anything like that, you can do that. But you know, for us, you know, when, when the pandemic hit, we walked in Forest Park every day as a family and we talked. You don't realize how much you didn't talk to each other 
until the world shut down that you really have to talk to people, right? And really be in relationship with people because we're, we're moving so fast. We're constantly moving, we're going. You, you have a daughter who is involved in all these different things and it's just run, 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 go, 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 go. Or my job or Erica's job. And so now you have to like be in deep relationship with people, truly asking how are they feeling and sitting with them, right? That, that's part of the health, right? That's part of being in this, this healthy space, walking around. You know, like I, I see, it was so funny when we walked, we see these older black people and you can tell like they weren't the type of people that were walking a lot, you know, and they were walking together. You see pods of people, you know, people were finding their people and, and, and walking and, and being healthy in that. I think, again, I just, I, I think that this, this notion of like stress and trauma lives in our bodies, right? There's this wonderful book called The Body Keeps the Score, right? Um, and so we have to move. And so what we're doing is we're, we, we, the pandemic allowed us to go outside. So now we've never did outdoor Four yoga. Mm -hmm. Of course, us to us. Mm -hmm. So we had outdoor yoga now and, and uh, hundreds of people at the, uh, under the arch practicing yoga, breathing, socially distanced. Um, but that's a part of what we're gonna continue to do, getting black people to be outside. Because there's another story about black people and nature that is a whole nother episode. <laughs> but you know, getting people outside to be able to breathe fresh air, to be in the community is what we're, forced to do that is a good thing. I think also helping people build connections. I know that's a part of the core of what we do at The Collective, but when the pandemic hit and we couldn't go into the studio, we couldn't even be outside together, we created virtual sessions where we would invite community and just talk about how you're feeling. And I think that that is also just as important as movement, just expressing how you're feeling, having a space to talk about what's going on inside. Um, and as a result, a lot of people that tuned into that show up now and talk about how much, you know, they will continue to share their lives with us, but are appreciative of having a space to just express how they were feeling, just dump their feelings and know that they were in a safe space and continuing that, like allowing people to just express how they feel as well. So you were using yoga to help people move their bodies before the pandemic, and now maybe even more important, helping us move, center, breathe, and connect. I, I, I really love that. What um, are you the most excited about moving forward into this next year? In terms of kids back to school, uh, you back in the studio or not? Like, what does the future look like for you over the next coming months? School's gonna start soon, I'm really excited. Uh -huh. um, I'm not sure, I'm assuming right now that we're just having everybody come back as before the pandemic, um, but it'll be interesting to see who chooses to stay home. Um, I'm excited though that we're gonna be back in the building and trying to get back to the norm of school. In terms of the collective, I think we've got a lot of new yogis that are coming into the space, which is exciting, there are people that we are just now meeting that may have seen us on um, social media or just virtually who are actually coming to practice with us. And so that's helping us build the community, expand the community. And that's really exciting to see people venturing out that would have never tried yoga before. And these techniques of movement, connection, nutrition, are all things that we've been talking about this whole time as essential parts of keeping our bodies safe from COVID. How are you all talking about the issue of vaccination and how that might keep our bodies safe from COVID? Yeah, so we're definitely pro-vaccine, -vac <laughs> right? But we all, there's a wonderful quote by Alice Walker who says, um, healing starts where the womb was made. And so that means that we have to go back. So when you hear these uh, black families or uh, elders are skeptical of getting vaccinated, yeah, that makes sense. The Tuskegee you know, experiment was real and all these other things were real. So we have to go back where the womb was started. And so what, what we are doing is having these conversations. So it's like a one-on-one -on -one conversation and we proudly let people know, yeah, we're vaccinated, right? We proudly let them know that. And then they ask questions. So how was it? How do you feel? You know, it's two months later, you're still alive, right? Then we just kind of slowly get people to get more comfortable uh, uh, with the, the concept of getting, being vaccinated. But there's no judgment. There's no judgment. Alice Walker said, the healing starts where the wound was made. There was real wounds. And so we don't judge people for pain that was inflicted upon them. There has been pain in the medical space that has been inflicted upon black people. And we're not gonna blame them for how they feel. 
But what we're going to do is we're going to build community and we're going to bring in a trusting doctor to say, hey, let's talk about this. This, this, is, these, this is my people. Like he's going to tell you the truth and we're going to sit in a circle and we're going to talk about these things, express your, your, your fear. And then if I need to be there with you, hold your hand as you get your shot, we'll do that too. Because ultimately we want you to live. And that's what this whole thing is about, right? The collective is about really imagining a space in the world where black people can breathe freely and there are no worries and people are happy and they're accepted and they're valued and they're cared for in community. That's what I'm hoping. That's, that's, what I, that's what I get excited about, right? So we have to talk about the vaccine. We have to talk about the need to be vaccinated, but we have to do that in a way that um, centers one's story and the pain that has been inflicted upon them within their experience and their story. I love that imagine a space. And if anything, what I've heard from both of you is that COVID has expanded the horizon of your imagination, both the value of what you bring to people and community and the possibility of what the future holds. Thank you so much for joining me today. And you know, I still need to get down to the collective, so I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be there because we got a little yoga mats and I kind of know a little bit about it, but I wanna learn more because I wanna breathe and I wanna breathe in community as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. What matters to me most? Imagine a space where we can breathe. You know, COVID, family, COVID's most powerful effect is the way in which it damages our lungs, the space where our body extracts life-giving oxygen so we can live. That same pandemic, that same virus, that same reality is opening up an opportunity for us to breathe together in a new way. If we sit and we listen and we allow all the stories, the ones from the past and the ones we're dreaming for in the future to be heard collectively, we're going to continue to find a way forward in this ongoing era of COVID. Thank you for hearing and holding space for us. Thank you for having the courage to breathe. Thank you for continuing to listen. What Matters to Me Most is a presentation of Prepare STL. Prepare STL is a collaboration powered by the Missouri Foundation for Health in partnership with the Regional Health Commission, the City of St. Louis, St. Louis County, and other community health organizations to help prepare all St. Louisans for the effects of the COVID-19 response, how to stop its spread, and how to survive the pandemic physically, emotionally, and economically. Don't miss an episode of the What Matters to Me Most podcast with Dr. LJ Punch, trauma surgeon and founder of the TSTL for the latest conversations on COVID-19 and STL, vaccines, racial health disparities, physical and emotional well-being, and more. Download the podcast at preparestl.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Executive producer, Vector Communications. What matters to me most is another positive production of Rare Gym Productions.